Hi, I'm Mike Boyer uh, with the Gwinnett Woodworkers Association. Uh, we're here at Rob's shop today to talk about different methods of coring bull blanks. So the purpose of the demo today is to show how to take a piece of wood and create multiple bowls by coring that piece of wood. Um, this comes in really handy when you have a really nice specimen piece of wood with some really nice grain. Um, it can, you can use it to create nested bowl sets and uh, frankly, it, you know, wood turners are known as wood wasters because of all the chips on the floor and this is one way of uh, recycling some of that wood and making another bowl out of it. So there's three basic sets of coring systems available on the market today. Um, Woodcut makes a bowl saver setup. Uh, there's the McNaughton Kelton center saver and the one way easy core. Um, woodcut bowl saver, uh, you're talking around $400 for the set. It comes with two knives. Uh, you, you can core 3 inches to 12 inches with a maximum depth of 5 inches. And the replacement knives are in the $50 to $60 range. The bowl saver mounts using the banjo and it also can optionally use the tailstock for additional support. You can't use a live center to support your work. Um, the advantage is this is probably one of the easiest si systems to use. Uh, McNaughton Center Saver, you're talking about $320 to $500. Typically it's a three knife set that comes with each and it comes with a handle and a post that mounts in your banjo. The micro set will core 4 to 10 inches. The standard set will core, also core 4 to 10 inches and the large set will core 10 to 24 inches. Replacement knives run 50 to $80. Again, the post that supports the knives mounts using the banjo. An advantage is you can use a live center to stabilize your bowl blank with this system. Uh, this system is probably the most flexible system there is as far as bowl sizes and bowl shapes. Uh, it also has the steepest learning curve. Uh, the One Way Easy Core, which is one of the systems we're going to show today, uh, this is basically the Cadillac of coring systems. It's definitely the most expensive. The base unit runs about $200. Each knife set ranges between $150 and $190. There are four knives. Uh, the smallest knife will cut a 9.5 to 11.5 inch radius. The next knife cuts 12 to 14 inch then there's 14 and a half to 16 and a half and the largest knife will cut 16 and 3 quarters to 18 inches. One nice thing about the easy core is that the cutters are replaceable which also makes sharpening them much easier. With easy core you can use the live center to stabilize the bowl blank and uh, my feeling is this is a little easier to use than the McNaughton. So we're going to use the one way easy core system today. Uh, I've got the pieces here set out in front of me. The heart of the system is the base. The base has two posts on it. One post is for the knife and the other post is for a support finger. Um, underneath it's got a mounting block with a screw to mount it to the lathe ways. Um, one way makes four different sets of knives for the system. Um, they have a 9 inch radius, which is the smallest one, that's this knife. They have an 11 and a half inch knife, a 13 inch, and a 16 inch knife. Each knife comes with a support post. When you're turning, the support post is going to hold the knife so that you don't get a lot of vibration or a lot of, you know, unsupported tool hanging out when you're coring. So, 
we need to make sure that the knives are set up for the lathe. So we're going to mount the base. And I'm just going to finger tighten the nut here so that I can slide this up and down. Then, as you can see it on the bottom of each of the knife is a set screw with a locking nut. This is how you adjust the height of the knives. So you want the knife set up so that the cutting tip is just at or slightly above center, which I've got there. So this knife is set up. If you have to change the height of the knife, then you also have to change the height of the support post. And you want to make sure that the post is set up so that the knife will just rub over the top. So this is set up good. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare a blank to get it on the lathe. Um, it's a lot easier if you start out with a round blank rather than a piece of log like we have here. So basically we've got a nice big hunk of maple here. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to get this in round. So I've measured it and it's about 16 inches bark to bark. So I have a plywood template. I've got a set of these all the way from 20 inches down to about 6 inches that I use when I'm cutting the circles. Um, see I've got a center pivot point and I've got holes to put screws in. The reason there's four holes in this one is sometimes I do a natural edge bowl. When I'm doing the natural edge bowl, you don't want holes in the foot of the bowl. So we use the outside screw positions for that. So basically we just pick where we want on the wood and we're gonna screw this down. You're gonna see that it rocks a little. So a trick I was shown by a good friend of mine We'll just throw some shavings down here to fill in the voids. And then when we screw this down, it's going to be nice and flat. So I'm just going to grab my screws. Okay, the other thing we need to do is we need to drill the quarter inch hole into the blank a little bit to make room for the post and so that we can find it later on when we put it on the lathe. So this is a sled I built that helps me cut the circles. Uh, on the bottom you can see we've got a runner strip that fits in the runner on the saw. I've also got a stop plate here so that when I slide this in it keeps me from cutting all the way through the jig. So basically we have to set this pivot point to the radius of the block, drop everything on it, and then just start cutting. So we'll set this pin up. And that's a 16 inch, so I need it just a little over eight. So this is on a this screw is on a T-track. So you can just slide it and tighten it where you want it to be. And it's getting a little bunged, but okay. And we just slide it back. And we're gonna grab our blank. And this is the fun part. So we've adjusted the height of the rollers here to make sure we clear both ends of the log. Basically we're going to start, the blade is not touching the log yet, we're going to slide the table in to the stop and then we'll start spinning the wood to create the circle. So. part. Back it off the blade. 
And now we've got a circle and it's going to be nice and balanced on the lathe. The other advantage to using the plywood, I mean you could just drill a hole in the blank and spin it on the pin, but because it's uneven you're going to have places where the wood wants to bang down as the blade goes through and it kind of tensions the blade. This is a nice flat surface that everything just slides on easily. So when we go to put this on the lathe we don't want to try and use the center on the bark or anything. So here's a real easy way to debark a log. Um, this is a Harbor Freight $10 special and it works very well for getting the bark right off the log. If the springs don't get in the way. And the nice thing is the, tr the bit's so dull it doesn't hurt the wood. That's about all we need to get off. Mm -hmm. So when you're working with something this big, you want a heavy duty chuck with a good five inch jaws on it, or you want to be using a four to six inch face plate on the work. Coring does produce a lot of stress on the wood, so you want to make sure this is securely mounted to the lathe. So we took this blank, we had it on a worm screw, we cut a tenon on the back, I put the chuck on the tenon, and now we'll mount it on the lathe. Okay. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to face this off, get rid of the chainsaw marks, That's why you always spin your work before you turn the lathe on. Make sure it's not going to hit the tool rest. And I'm going to put a face mask on for this. So I'm going to bring this up slowly to about 400 or so. Then we can start facing off the front of this end. Just a little bit more to go here. Okay, so we've got a nice smooth face now, and we're ready to start laying out for the different bowl sizes. So 
we're not going to need the tool rest anymore. One thing you can do with the one-way system, as long as you're careful, is you can use it to waste away the outside of the bowl blank by using the larger knife to cut that piece off. Um, you do have to be very careful with this. Uh, there's a good chance that something could break and the piece could come flying off. So we're going to make sure that we use all our safety guards for this operation. So I've set up the largest knife and I've set up the support post. Right now we have the fat part of the post nearest to the wood. As, you'll see, as I start progressing the knife in, you'll see me change the knife so that the knife starts following the blade into the cut. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just going to hold the handle, I'm going to put a little bit of downward pressure on the tool rest, and I'm going to start advancing the knife into the cut. I'm not using a lot of pressure here, just enough to keep the blade in contact. Okay, we'll stop here. Once you get to the top part of this taper on the cutter, then you want to start advancing the knife blade in. So we'll loosen this up. This swings all the way around. And then you can start advancing the finger of the support into the cut. When you do that, you want to make sure that the radius of the knife matches the radius of the support finger. So go to the bottom, then just back it out just a little bit so it's not rubbing, and then tighten it back down. And one thing I forgot to mention is with coring, the greener, the better. Uh, this wood is only, what, about a week old now, so it's got a lot of moisture in it, makes it a lot easier to core. The drier the wood, the more difficult the coring is going to be. So we're going to ro rotate this backwards to make sure that there's no chips on the end of the knife blade. And then we're going to continue on. Wrong switch. Okay, once the handle of the knife gets over the large part of the post, you need to advance it back in some more. And same thing, just go to hit the bottom, back it off a little bit, make sure the radius of the knife, the support matches the blade. And while we're here, we're just going to make sure that this chuck's not loosening up on us. the support again. Okay. there. There we go. 
That's why you have the safety shield on. But the nice thing about doing this is then the outside of your bowl blank has got the same knife radius and it'll match all the insides. It's a lot less work doing that than shaping all of that with a bowl gouge. Once we have the blank bowl shape, we have to figure out where we're, we're going to core the other sections out of. And we have two choices. We can either do a twice turn bowl where you're going to turn it, cut the bowl blank here. You're going to let it dry for a period of time. Once it's dry, you put it back on the lathe and turn it to final shape. Or you can do a once turn bowl where you're going to do the final turning while it's green and let mother nature do whatever she wants with the bowl. Uh, we'll set this up for twice turned bowls. So the rule of thumb is that you want the wall thickness to be about 10% of the diameter of the wood. So we've got a 15 inch blank here. That means I want it about an inch and a half in. So I'll put a mark there. I'll put a mark 3 16 down. And that's where we'll do our first cut. I've now got about five and a half. So I've got an 11 inch blank. So we'll make the next mark a little over an inch down. And again, we'll add the 3 16 for the cutter. And that'll be our second blank. We've now got an 8 inch bowl. So I'll mark just a little bit over 3 quarters of an inch. And add the 3 16 Okay, and these will be the three cuts we're doing. When we do actually do the cuts, we're going to start with the center and then we'll move out to the outer bowls. Um, the outer bowl is what they call the money bowl. You know, that's what you're going to be able to get the most money for. So that's the one you really want to make sure you've got enough wood on. You can skimp on the inner ones, but the outer one you want to make sure you've got the proper wall thickness for it. Now what we have to do is we have to transfer these three cuts to the top of the blank. So if I measure in here, again I've got about an inch and a half to the cut. So I'm going to measure off the back of the chuck an inch and a half. Okay, then another three eighths. Okay, and that will be one of the cuts. Then another two inches up from that will be the bottom of the next bowl. Take that back. An inch and a quarter up from that, I thought two inches was a little big. So right about there. And then another three eighths. That will be the bottom of the next bowl. And then this other piece is basically just going to be a core we're going to take out. So four and three quarters from the bottom one. Yeah, that puts us right about there. So that one's going to be a real shallow bowl. Okay, so back out to the So we've got our marks on the front, which is where we're going to hit with the cutter. We've got marks on the back, which are where hopefully the bottom of the bowl will end up once we do the cut. So on the Powermatic, I've got five and a half inches to the top of the chuck. And I know that the first, the bottom of the smallest bowl is about nine inches from there. So I have to do a whole bunch of math 
and I have a little cheat sheet here. So what we have to determine is where this knife post goes. Okay, so we know what the distance from the chuck to the headstock is and the bottom of our cut to the headstock so we can calculate exactly where we want the bottom of, we want the knife post based on the lowest cut. And it's a whole bunch of math and I don't always get it right. So I'm going to show you a trick that my mentor John Hatton showed me that makes life a whole lot easier. And it involves using a laser. So for the smallest cut, we're going to need to use a six inch knife. Thank you. So I'll put the six inch knife in the base, I'll put the tool post holder in. Let me get this moved up to where it needs to be. Somebody over tighten that. Namely me. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to mount the post close to where we're going to hit. We'll just snug it down a little bit. Then I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to sight down the cutter and I'm going to put a line on top of the post. Okay, then I'm going to take the knife out. So I've got a homemade jig here. It's just a piece of PVC pipe with a laser adapter. I think this is a Ron Brown laser. I'm going to turn on the laser and I'm going to make it so that that light hits the mark I made for the center of the cutter, which is right about there. Okay. Now, instead of a whole bunch of me measuring, I just have to line up the laser marks. So I've got the laser adjusted for the mark on my tool post. Now all I have to do is move the base until I, the laser hits the mark for my first cut. So just bring it up and we're right on center there. Now I just continue to rotate the laser to the marks on the top. So I rotated the laser so that now it's showing at the marks and reference marks I made on the back. And I can see that I'm a little too deep. So I'll just slide it out till I hit that cut mark. And I'll go back to the face again. And then back to the top. So what I've got now is this laser is simulating the arc of the cutter. So theoretically, we ought to end up with a bowl this deep in that diameter when we're done cutting. So I'm going to lock down the tool rest. And I'm going to have to advance this post a little closer. So for the small bowl, we'll use the six and a half inch knife. That tool rest isn't quite where I want it to be. Okay, we're going to rotate it, make sure we don't hit anything here. Put the handle on. So we've got the tool post adjusted. And I'm tightening up the handle on the cutter. And we're ready to start coring the first bowl. So I'm going to bring the speed up to around 500 or so. And we're just going to start the cutter in the hole.
I think I've cleared enough here where I can probably get a live center in for additional support. So I have a, a live center on a number two Morse taper extension. It should be able to slide right in over the handle. And then I can lock this in place just to give it a little bit extra support. And that should also help with that vibration that we were getting. And once again, when we hit the top of the taper on the knife, we have to advance the tool in. advantageous now you can see what's happening inside of it so obviously that piece broke off in the middle and we're almost down to the point where we're cut all the way through and here's the piece that was left I'm gonna put this on now the inside of our first bowl. One thing I like to do after I've got that core taken out is just to advance the live center in and just tighten it up a little bit to give me a center reference so that if I do want to reverse chuck this I know where the center of the blank is and I can go from there. So our second bowl we said was going to be 8 inches in diameter so I need the next knife up for that. So we'll just do the same trick again. I've already got a mark on top of this tool post that I've adjusted to be right underneath the cutter. Get the laser out. And we'll adjust it to hit the mark on the tool post. That's good. Then we'll find our mark on the wood. So that's the center of the cutter on the side, and then we'll rotate the laser around to the back. Get it centered on that mark, and then bring it around back to the front. Let's see if 
there. Okay, so we're right on the mark on the side and we're a little off on the front, so we'll just slide this hopefully fairly straight. Centered on that mark, and we're centered on the back mark, so that's we're good to go with the position. Just lock that down. You need to adjust the tool post a little to get a little closer to the wood. Make sure nothing hits. Now the nice thing about the one way is you can change the depth of the bowl by offsetting the post off of center and bringing it out. Um, for some bowls, you're not going to be able to use the tailstock because the bar is going to be in the way, but this is going to fit in there nice. So this is where the Morse taper extension comes in handy, being able to get past the knife bar. We'll just snug that up. Just double check everything. And we're ready to start the first bowl. The so same speed, about four, 450 to 500 RPMs. So we've got the knife halfway past the bevel point so we'll turn the support around and get the finger into the cut. Sometimes when you're turning the corner from side grain to end grain things will get a little catchy on you. This is going to go in the bloopers part right because I can't get the finger in there. There we go. Clear the chips. Two knots in there, that's what's giving us trouble. So there's your first bowl blank. Back this off to get the knife out of the way. Here, take the handle off for me. I'm going to advance the headstock in to give us a mark for center. Bring it back up out of the way. Thank you. So I'm switching to the next larger knife to do this in the middle bowl. 
I need to move the post so that I can get the laser reference here. And again, just sighting down the cutter tip. I'm just going to put a mark on the post. on. There we go. So we're right on the mark that I made on the post. And now we can find our mark on the side, which we're a little towards the center and we're not deep enough yet. So, loosen up the base. We got the mark on center on the depth. Okay. Back that way just a little and we're on center on the face too. So that's where the, the cutter pivot to be. It looks like we're gonna clear Sometimes you have to pull it off of the tailstock to get the smaller part of the taper over the tool post. Okay, and we're all locked down. Everything looks good. Then up to the top of the taper, so we need to advance the post in. And again, and we want to make sure that the post radius matches the knife radius. When the shaft of the knife gets to the post, it's time to advance it in some more. Sometimes you can tell by the sound when that core is about to come loose. Obviously, that one didn't happen. So, there's our middle bowl. Oh, 
while I'm here, I'm just going to mark the center of this one too. Okay, so from this one bowl blank, we were able to t get three bowls out of it. All the shavings didn't end up in the floor, so we're not quite as bad a wood waster as they say we are. But this will make a really nice set of nested bowls. Now when it comes time to turn these the second time around, obviously you're going to lose a little bit of depth when you go to turn the tenon on the bottom of these bowls. So you ha have your choice of either just putting the tenon on, turning the bowls, and then when you go to stack them, they won't line up on the face. So if you want them to look nice and line up on the face, what you'll end up doing is taking a little bit off the rim of this one, a little bit off the rim to that one, so that when you put them all in together and stack them up, it's nice and flat across the top. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put these in paper bags. We're going to set them aside in a nice neutral temperature place. The rule of thumb is what a, an inch a year. So given that this guy is a little more than an inch, he's going to have to sit for a while unless you want to try uh, speeding up the drying through using uh, DNA or, you know, killing drying it if you want. But I just put them in a bag and leave them and come back and turn them the second time. <laughs>